Collagen is a protein that if you take your body and pull out all the protein, about 25 to 30 percent of that is going to be collagen. Collagen is really important for our connective tissues like bone, ligament, cartilage, and, of course, your skin. Collagen consists of these three chains twisted together in a rope referred to as the triple helix. Collagen is a building block. It provides structural support and, of course, with age, we lose collagen throughout our body. So there's a lot of interest in taking collagen as a supplement. Collagen supplements are not actually collagen, but rather hydrolyzed collagen, basically digested and broken down into something that truly can be absorbed in the digestive tract and, believes it or not, localized to the skin. Yes, this does happen. There are research papers showing that this happens. Hydrolyzed collagen in supplements is basically collagen that is obtained from animal sources like chicken, fish, and pork, and it is hydrolyzed into peptides that can be absorbed in the digestive tract, go through the bloodstream, and localized to the skin. Consumers are interested in taking collagen supplements to improve the visible signs of skin aging, wrinkles, and fine lines. If you were to wear, collagen loss happens as a natural process of aging, and then, of course, as a result of all of the things that we are exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis, and our lifestyle habits influence our healthy collagen levels. When you go out in the sun, for example, certain enzymes in the skin get activated that chew up collagen. This also can happen as a result of exposure to environmental stressors. And with age, enzymes that chew up collagen also start to increase. Our ability to make new healthy collagen declines. You get a buildup of degraded collagen in the skin. And all of these things culminate together in some of the visible signs of skin aging like loss of elasticity, loss of elastic recoil, loss of volume, a decrease in epidermal thickness, and a decrease in the ability of the skin to retain water and moisture content. Now, as I mentioned, several studies actually show that when you digest hydrolyzed collagen, the collagen peptides can go through the digestive tract, get absorbed in the blood, localized to the skin, and studies suggest that though they can stimulate fibroblasts, which are the cells that make collagen, to do so, to make new healthy collagen. This also results in improved skin hydration and improves skin elasticity. The end result of all of this, of course, the goal is to have a smoothing out of wrinkles and fine lines. Now, it's not all about the cosmetic effects. People tend to focus on that as it relates to aging. But with loss of the supportive framework in our skin, which is our largest organ, the barrier to the outside world, it becomes more vulnerable to tearing, to infection, and is a lot slower to heal. So with our aging population, we're also more prone to things like pressure ulcers and bed sores. I know, not a fun topic. But in that population, there is also a lot of interest in preventing and treating skin breakdown. Now, we've got our skin. We've got our connective tissues and whatnot. We've also got our hair, our nails. The theory is that the healthy collagen, the peptides, also go to those tissues and provide support and whatnot. But there isn't a ton of published evidence to really support that. There is a good amount of data to support it for the skin, but not so much for the hair and the nails. Now, some people will tell you that hydrolyzed collagen has a high content of the amino acids glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline and that these amino acids are somehow unique to collagen and essential in making new collagen. This is not true. All proteins are made up of amino acids, and collagen is no exception. It is true that glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline make up a larger percentage of the amino acid content of collagen. They're unique to collagen in that respect. But if you are eating a well-balanced diet and you are getting adequate protein, then you don't really need to worry about getting additional glycine, proline, or hydroxyproline for your collagen levels. Your body will make all the collagen it needs. Now, another reason people are interested in collagen is for bone health. Collagen is really important for bone structure and integrity. And so people have been taking collagen supplements to try to improve their bone health. But the data on that is quite limited. There are a few studies, including a meta-analysis, that show no effect of collagen supplementation on bone health. 
There is one small study that showed a positive effect of collagen supplementation on bone mineral density, but that study was funded by a collagen supplement manufacturer. So take that for what it's worth. There is another theory that taking collagen might help with muscle protein synthesis and recovery after exercise. This is a really interesting theory. In the past, I have shown you data suggesting that taking a collagen supplement with vitamin C might enhance the synthesis of collagen in the skin. There is one study in elderly men that showed that taking collagen supplementation before exercise did enhance muscle protein synthesis compared to taking a placebo. But, interestingly, the men in that study were fasted, and so that might have actually contributed to the increased muscle protein synthesis that was seen with the collagen supplementation. So the bottom line on collagen supplements for skin, hair, and nails is that there is good evidence to suggest that when you take a collagen supplement, the hydrolyzed collagen does get absorbed, it does localize to the skin, it stimulates fibroblasts, the cells that make collagen to make more collagen, and that can result in improved skin hydration, improved skin elasticity, and smoothing out of wrinkles and fine lines. But it is important to remember that our skin is a very big organ, and there is a lot more to our skin than just collagen. It is not the fountain of youth. The evidence for collagen supplements for hair and nails is not as strong. There's just not a lot of published data to really support that. And as far as collagen supplements for bone health, the data is pretty limited and inconclusive. But as always, there is individual variability. Some people might notice benefits from taking collagen supplements, and if you do, then that's great. But if you're thinking about taking a collagen supplement, just keep in mind that they are not regulated by the FDA, so you need to do your due diligence. Look for third-party testing. Look for certifications. And be aware that collagen peptide powders are generally better absorbed than collagen pills. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.